I do care what you do with this information because it is important to our survival as a species. It's important to our planet. It is important for the world. Some people think that aliens are from another planet, and some people think that aliens travel intergalactically to say that they travel as people or pilots in a ship. And some people think that they're from another solar system, and um, some people think that they created us, and so some people think that they're here to bring about a ancient knowledge that mankind lost or something like that some people think that Christ is one of these individuals in a human thing or a human uh, disguise there are a lot of different beliefs in regards to them and one thing has been proven true is that these beings have been deceivers since they first got here and every time they told a ruler or a person that they came from a planet or they came from a society and that they were created under a different God than we would know, it has often been shown to be a lie. Um, they seem to also change the story of their origin, and history has shown that over and over again. And what I mean by that is to say many times when people thought that they were on another planet, it turned out that under hypnotic trance, through hallucinations called either holographic images, they were meant to think they were on another planet. Some of them have literally woken up in the midst of having this technology operated on and they realized that they were actually in a laboratory room and unfortunately when they realized they were in a laboratory room they realized that there were human beings in that room and there were actual real Nephilim beings in that room. They realized that they were not on a planet but they realized that they were somewhere on earth and they were in a secret place where they were being experimented on. Some of them are actually using ships, real technological ships, to kidnap people. That does not qualify them as coming from another planet as the way they would defy it. So let's let's understand a little bit more evidence on that. Let's go back to the intergalactic thing, okay? If they're from an intergalactic world, 
let's say they're from nine solar systems away from us. And they were from a technological world that is nine solar systems away from us. That world would be far more present than non-existent as we're in that state now. Meaning the traffic would be so heavy that you would see it. And you would clearly see it all the time. Interesting thing about space is that the solar system that we live in is actually called clean space, meaning there aren't really a whole lot of debris and gases and things in our solar system. It's very, it's very clean. But the solar systems that are around us are filled with very dangerous gases, and they're filled with strange anomalies, um, weird type of rocks, and basically what I'm saying is for the kind of technology to travel warp speed at such a speed and power that it would probably kill them before they even got here. The gases would definitely ignite with nuclear energy sources. This is why deep interstellar travel is not possible because the more and more further you go out into space the more and more dangerous it becomes to travel. So if there was intergalactic activity going on where people are actually blasting themselves from that solar system over to here, the traffic and the accidents and the explosions from these accidents would be so magnificent that they would be seen from Earth. And so we don't see anything like that. Not anything like that at all. And let's say they manage to get through the uh, gases and the rock formations and everything else. Let's say they develop some type of technology where they could actually do that. Still, what you don't factor in is that you will see them coming before they even got here. And the whole world would actually see them coming before they even got here. You don't see that. So that debunks any theory that they are intergalactic. Also, if they created us, then who created them? You gotta recognize that the universe is far bigger than an alien, as they want to call it. And these aliens do not have appropriate explanations for these things. They ignore these questions. At this stage, the rocket was traveling between 11 and 14,000 miles per hour when a saucer-shaped craft entered the frame. It flew into the frame like this, and it shot a beam of light at the warhead. Now, remember, all this took was flying at several thousand miles an hour. So this thing fires a beam of light at the warhead, hits it, fires another beam of light, and then flies out the way it came in. And the warhead tumbles out of, the, out of space. In many incidences where these beings have been confronted, Jesus Christ has often been asked of them. And you know they actually say that he's real? They can't even deny him. Have you ever wondered why? Now, from their behavior of disappearing and reappearing, that's not the behavior of an intergalactic entity. Because you are an intergalactic entity you are actually in a galaxy. And if you were to go to another planet, let's say Mars, they would see you coming because you're in a ship. You would actually try to communicate with the rulers. You would communicate with the people. They would see you coming down from your ship in a normal intergalactic travel way. Have you ever seen these entities do that? Absolutely not. They just seem to appear out of nowhere. And they always want to have very secret meetings. And they're very good at hiding from the people. Have you ever wondered why? When these entities have been under investigation, when we watch them come in and out of our world, you've watched them literally open a portal in the sky and go into it and then come out of the same portal. This spiral portal has also been shown that it can be created in satanic occults 
There are people who practice magic that we would probably know now as Kabbalah, but had other names before that, where they can open up the same portals. And not open up the same portals, but they can call up entities that look exactly like aliens. But yet, they don't call them aliens. They call them evil spirits. And they say that Christians would call them demons. But yet, Independence Day, The X-Files, all these shows want you to think they're aliens. The truth is out there, and they're not aliens. Have you ever asked yourself, why would they want you to think that, though? You see, if you think alien, you don't think about Jesus. And when you think alien, it makes you doubt Jesus. And when you doubt Jesus, guess what happens? These aliens run right over you. They take control of you. They possess you. They do terrible things. They're not your friend. They're not my friend. And they're not the solution to the human race. You see, you probably heard that they tell the human race and the rulers that you need to make peace and you need to end your weaponry and stop killing each other and stop doing these harmful things to each other and we'll help you. But yet, what you don't told is that these aliens also want our help too. How is that? How is it if they got things together, why do they need our help? If they're so superior, why do they need us to disarm? If they can help us, why don't they just do it? Why do they need something from us? Have you ever wondered why? A good hustler knows that when you hustle something, you need to get back in return. You're doing it because you want to make that person happy so that you can make yourself happy when you get back the return. A hustler will sell you something, but he wants the money. Do you understand? Did you know when dealing with these beings in negotiation, where your tax dollars are being used to talk to them and you're not even told anything about it, did you know these beings hustle? They promise people technology. They promise people to solve all their medical problems. They promise to show them the ruins of planets and to take them there and to help them build a society there without the people, which is you, me, and the people they're supposed to be ruling over and basically feeding us and taking care of us and making society possible for us. A former astronaut who walked on the moon says aliens exist and that the government has been covering up incidents of contact for years now. Dr. Edgar Mitchell says aliens have visited our planet and he believes the government covered up the discovery of an alien spacecraft in 1947 as well as four alien bodies that were found in the desert. The reason for the denial was, uh, number one, we didn't, they didn't know if these were hostile and could we uh, protect ourselves from them. They didn't want the Soviets to know, so they devised to, to lie about it and cover it up. Well, Dr. Mitchell is a veteran of the Apollo 14 mission, and he walked on the moon back in February of 1971. I've read about this incident you had in 1951, and you said you saw literally hundreds of unidentifiable flying objects. Yes, they were flying quite high. How high, we couldn't tell, because we couldn't get anywhere near their altitude. But they were either very large craft way up, or smaller craft still well above what we could get to. For a day and a half, all of this happened. But then no one wanted to talk about it. Well, we sent a report forward on it, and, and the answer that finally came back months later was they were probably high-flying seed pods, which didn't sound very logical. <laughs> but the real question here that we've been addressing is have we been visited? Are we, uh, since we are now a spacefaring civilization, having only gone to our own moon, but have our visitors, our, the aliens, have they come to us? And all the evidence says yes. So what is it that you want to see the Obama administration release? What is it specifically? What do you think is there that we need to see? Well, 
the uh, other nations, and this has been a global phenomenon, other nations in, in just in recent history, the Belgian nation, the, the French, the <coughs> Brazilians, the Mexicans, the uh, Argentines, uh, all of their files have been opened up. And there's no reason in the world why the U.S. files, the leading nation in the world in this period, should have been registered in opening hours too, except special interest groups. So, so Andrew, so, let me let me ask you. I mean, for all the stories that have leaked over all the years, I mean, and, and there's always somebody somewhere that's going to leak something. And, and if there was really something there, don't you think by now somebody would have said something? Well, it has. People have been saying it all along. But the, uh, for example, just the explanation to the Roswell incident has changed every few years, and a new story comes out. If it were really uh, that simple, if it, if it weren't what it really was, you wouldn't need all of these various stories coming out. And so the attempt to cover this up and to disguise the issue and uh, create misinformation and disinformation is very well recorded. And the documentation from very fine researchers like Dr. Robert Wood uh, and his son Ryan, who have investigated all of the early documents, all point to the same story. Hey, we're not alone here. We've been visited. There's a monolith there, a very unusual structure on this little potato-shaped object that, that goes around Mars once in seven hours. When people find out about that, they're going to say, who put that there? Who put that there? Well, uh, the universe put it there. If you choose, God put it there. There's a monolith, monolith, monolith. Okay, so what we have here with certain fallen angels is that they have the ability to transform. And a lot of that was exploited in, in the Transformer series movies and, um, and in the Transformer cartoons. And so what they did was they based that off of something that was real. And so what we have with fallen angels is not what people think. It's not the uh, touched by an angel version with these guys. Um, these beings are spiritual beings with incredible powers. And one of those powers entails that as we would create objects and as we would form these objects through resources and through the uh, materials and the powers that we have, their powers is, is that they can transform themselves into objects. And so we're talking objects that look like um, space age vehicles and planes. We're talking about objects that basically uh, look like other entities. They can transform into a creature. They could transform into a ship. They can transform to even look like the implements that we have. They can literally transform themselves to disguise themselves as a car, as a plane, and as a lot of different type of objects. There's really nothing they can really do in, in terms of transforming. We, knew, we do know that when it comes to the fallen angels, they don't have as much power as they normally would in terms of their transforming abilities, but they do have them at a very good uh, length. So um, they're not uh, totally depowered. And so a lot of them like to transform into ships. A lot of them like to transform into certain objects. A lot of them like to transform into basically UFOs, basically planes, basically other looking creatures. And uh, sometimes they get sporadic. You know, sometimes they kind of, you know, from a lot of the transforming and using the powers that they use in our dimension, and it kind of weighs heavy on them. You know, they can't always maintain it. Um, they can't always maintain the form or the shapes that they take and sometimes they go a little crazy in the atmosphere and then sometimes it's caught on camera where they're just like morphing into like a UFO and then a dragon and then other types of forms of um, spiritual reptilian looking um, um, you know helixes if you will you know combinations of different forms um, for instance you'll see some transforming from a UFO into a dragon looking creature and then back again and then it disappears and then comes back again and when it's doing that what's happening at that moment is that it's freaking out because it can't maintain its form in our dimension and they don't want to go back to the other dimension they just came from so they try to struggle with it and uh, sometimes when they come into our dimension they're pretty set in their form or their shape and they're able to maintain it for probably long periods of time before 
before they end up dissipating and then another group comes in. And so there is a weakness to them, but um, we don't have the weapons to really combat them, to tell you the truth. I mean, um, fighting them is like throwing sticks at them. It's not going to work. You know, you can throw a nuclear warhead at them and that's not going to work. You can shoot bullets at them and that's not going to work. Um, when it comes to the full spiritual beings, the full fallen spiritual beings, I'm not talking about their Nephilim children who are another story because they can morph too, and but uh, not as well as the fallen angels. Uh, the fallen angels, to, to understand them, they're usually balls of light and then they have demons that can also appear that way. Um, so it's tricky identifying them, but one thing that you can do is when you pay enough attention to them or if you spent enough time observing them, you start to notice how the demon lights are not as transformable as um, the fallen angels. The fallen angels are, you know, they can basically transform within seconds and disappear within seconds and the demons or the spiritual demons, um, they seem to maintain a, a certain form and then they're known to just basically disappear a lot quicker and so um, that's probably the only way you can tell on that end you know um, when it comes to these beings you know aliens are two types you know um, aliens is what people will know them are actually fallen angels and fallen angels have more power than people think they're more um, creative in their deception than people think um, fallen angels like to pretend to be aliens um, they'd rather you think something different other than what the truth is. And then you have the Nephilim, who the Bible says were the children of the fallen angels. And they too still exist, and they too have been mistaken as aliens. And so what we have like in the time of Enoch, when the book of Enoch was talking about it, it very much confirmed that, that there was a time when these beings lived on earth, and they came from a dimensional world, and they actually came, you know, through portals, basically. Enoch saw them coming from another world, literally another world beyond our world, and that has nothing to do with the solar system or, or the galaxy or how, or how we would know the universe. This universe of theirs is behind our universe, and they can open up doors, spiritual doors, basically, portals that have spiral shapes, and they resemble 666 shapes and they basically come through the portals and when they do they tell people they're aliens or they tell people they're gods or they tell people that they came from Jupiter or from Mars and they tell people they're gonna solve all their problems and then when people deal with them and this is our rulers by the way our rulers make deals with them and even if it involves hurting us they'll make those deals with them the globalists don't believe in Satanism they believe they're contacting interdimensional aliens through the drug use and through the electronic interface, and they believe, and actually write about, Ray Kurzweil, all of them, that they're going to merge with the machines, blast off into hyperdimensional space. And that's why they're so crazy. That's why they want to get rid of us. That's why they're smiling and giddy and acting so nuts, because they believe, if you're a psychiatrist or, you know, and, and, and are hearing this, understand, whether it's real or not, they believe they are in contact with these entities and are being directed by them. That's why they're so evil. And the entities are telling them eternal life, total power, total control, everything you could ever want. Just kill everyone. Set up a world government. Build this design we're telling you. Build what we're telling you. Build this. Build this. Let us through. Build the Hadron Collider. Open the dimensions. Let us in. We're going to really help you. We're friendly little guys. They'll think for one minute they come from a planet, next thing you know, well, you know, we didn't come from that planet, we came from another planet, and oh, we didn't come from that planet, oh yeah, we did come from a dimension, but, you know what I mean? And so they lie, you know, they've been lying for like centuries. So the thing is, when you look into them, when you really, you know, get some guts and decide to, you know, investigate them and you know, find out where do they come from by simply you know doing the things that investigative science taught us which is to investigate you know origin investigate matter investigate movement investigate all these things that would make a person or defy what a person is you know how you can tell something is a dog and what a dog does and where a dog goes and what a dog eats and what a dog does in terms of you know its lifestyle and so when you do that with you know, so-called alien study, guess what you find out? 
you find out they don't come from another planet, you find out that they don't move galactically, you find out that they move interdimensionally, they move through parallel portals. When we talk about like Enoch, when we talk about what makes Enoch so important, why, you know, what's the big deal about Enoch, you know, um, why is everybody going toward the book of Enoch? There's two reasons why. What happened in Enoch's time is happening now in our time. And that's scary. Because what happened in his time was, was pretty messed up. Okay, so what we had that occurred in Enoch's time was that there were rulers that were on that earth, powerful rulers who were worshiping evil spirits. These evil spirits told these rulers that they came from another planet and that they were going to solve their problems for them and that there was more God than, than just the one true God. And so they believed in that for like hundreds of years for a while and these were like descendants of even Seth. And um, what happened was is that over time, over time, while these rulers were worshiping and not taking warning from the other sons of God, those entities backstabbed them. And what happened was is that the more and more the rulers worshipped them and the more and more they got control over what they did, it allowed those entities to enter further and further into our world to the point where they received enough energy and enough permission from these rulers to literally enter our stratosphere. And when they entered our stratosphere, they came in full invasion force. The book of Revelation tells us that's going to happen again. We are living in the stage where the beginning of that is already happening. So what we uh, put this picture is Hitler basically meeting up with the fallen entities. And that was basically irregular for him. He had a very large interest in basically following them and basically communicating with them and basically talking to them. And these beings were, you know, very much uh, part of the plan and the destruction of World War II. You'd be amazed at the fact there was a lot of attacks in World War II that they actually took part in that history tries to cover up or tries to bury. I mean, if you look back at maybe 15 years from 9-11, so many people will have a different uh, view and a different um, explanation to that. But when it all comes down to it, the Bible tells us that fallen entities are involved and our leaders and our leaders shake hands with them and greet them and, you know, are happy to see them. Hitler is also very much involved with the 13 council members and so he's very much a guy who reports to them. And there was this is one picture that you're looking at right here. This photograph was actually snapped, I believe, during um, an attack at uh, Antarctica. I kid you not. Um, Hitler didn't die in 1945. He actually died later on after World War II because he was hidden in that base for a while. This was a photograph that was shot of one of the UFOs, if you will, one of the Viminia uh, aircraft carrier, aircraft planes that attacked an aircraft carrier right before it decided to unleash a, a hail of missiles on it. Uh, one of the soldiers snapped a picture of it. And, um, you know, these are the things that you got to really wrap your mind around because when you don't wrap your head around it, you know, you're going to get very caught up in it. This is also the same deal. Um, what you're looking at at the bottom with the heat source is very much the um, the fuel injection of the plane and or the Viminia. This is also another photo shot of the Viminia. And what you're looking at right here is kind of what I'm talking about here is some of the um, engineering components of some of these Viminias. Um, they have a uh, circular fusion type of um, power and it's right at the center of the Viminia and um, basically um, fusion that's basically using um, type of nuclear fusion with water and basically sends it into a lot of hyperactive speeds and um, it's just very very advanced and it just show you just how advanced we were in World War II which would even implicate to you now just how more advanced we are now and how so much of that is not shown and what you're looking at here is, is another case of that um, you can see how sleek they build these Viminias and you can see how well they've gotten to the point of building them 
Uh, they're nowhere near to the point where they used to be, but um, they've gotten there now. A lot of this was help from the fallen angels because our rulers by that point did not have uh, a lot of mental capacity behind this, and so they had to be retaught how to rediscover their own inventions, which is um, very sad. Um, but, you know, it's the making of their own doing. If you look very closely at this, you'll notice a, uh, I believe it's a 50 cal machine gun that was embedded, built at the bottom of this one. And um, what you notice with these things is that they're usually um, machine guns that are basically placed inside the Verminia and then they're released uh, to come out and then to be used against upon other people basically to open fire on people. And um, just to show you the military strength of these things. You have something as well here. You got a guy standing on top of one. And um, what you have here is also another one too. And um, as you can see, it's pretty much parked there. If you notice the Rolls Royce that is uh, near this uh, UFO, it's to show you that, you know, the elite were the ones that were privy to this type of stuff. They were the ones that were there to watch it and look at it and examine it and admire it. And what we have here is the same angle, same deal. Um, and this is probably uh, one of the very well-known ones. And one of the things I need to mention uh, about this thing is that a lot of the times when they were launching these Ruminios, a lot of the Ruminios were to be launched to go into the planets, basically to the moon, Mars, other places, other secret locations on Earth. Many times they called in witches to uh, basically conjure up demons for them to guide them or direct them certain portal ways that they would fly the um, instruments into and then come back in and out. A lot of things in their world is not what you would think. It's uh, a lot more worse than that. And um, same thing that you have here. You had one basically hovering up about with um, airplanes basically hovering over it. And um, what you have here is um, another base basically. It's a design of a base. But um, it's basically a design of an energy source. If you look at all the um, contraptions that are connected to the triangle points, those are called energy bars. And with these energy bars, basically, they're like giant transformers that can fuse powerful energy. And they all connect, kind of like a wiring. And all the energy will be centered to the center of the main core of the energy source. And um, what you're looking at here is what they used to do with pyramids a long time ago. And now they've invented the circular type formations. And um, all these things are about energy sources and advanced technology. This is also a blueprint of a Viminia, how to build one and um, how to construct one. You'll notice some things about it. Viminias usually are about, they have basically three levels or three floors. You have a top level where um, that's where the operations, flying, things like that. And uh, you have a bottom level. One is for laboratories. Another, well, laboratories would be right at the bottom. And the middle sections are their homes, basically where they sleep in and where, they're, um, where they rest. And uh, this is a model for a really big giant one. This is the Nazi base. And um, what we have with this base, it's very old. It was built in the, the starting building construction on it was in the 40s, late 30s to the 40s. And um, right now, it's um, one of the most advanced uh, colonies on the moon. It has technology that would literally blow your mind away. Um, right now there's about two million people living on there, on that base. It's actually a city and it's very, very big, very huge. You have literally advanced space age technology there. It's one of the last things left of the, of the Reich Empire of Hitler. It's now part of the Rothschild Illuminati colonies and um, they control it right now and um, it's basically their moon base and um, it's um, just very very advanced uh, the swastika building as you're seeing is, is very huge and there's so much more in that area that's very much shrouded in the darkness but if you were to get on the ground level 
you'll see just how huge and massive this thing is and just how big it really is. The top part of it is a huge uh, satellite on top and um, just very, very advanced, filled with aircraft hangars and all kinds of other advanced technology there. Um, basically, they almost live in a Star Trek world there. Um, it's quite interesting. What we had here with the astronauts doing this was that they were setting up mirrors and what they were trying to do was they know that in the occult that um, certain mirrors scare off evil spirits because they don't like to look at themselves in a mirror which is another reason why evil spirits like to appear as the host or, or some other entity or person their real true form is so horrifying that it even horrifies them and so that was the aim at setting up the mirror but the mirror was so I would say it's so amateur, you know, uh, they were basically using folding mirrors and um, just wasn't a smart idea. I think it was just more down out of panic, you know, one of those things you do where you're so scared, just figure out the next thing to do. And what you have here is the same deal, they were basically on a base and um, they're in basically a, a facility that's mostly underground but it has a few bases on top, a few housings on top. The government really hates this picture. Um, they hate it for a lot of reasons. Um, because um, it's too real. <laughs> you notice the golf club there, and that was from the fact they were playing golf at the time. So, you know, basically to, I guess, I don't know, to relax their nerves. When they were told to get off the moon, they found it absolutely offensive that, offensive that they actually came up there to play golf which is why Americans are not welcome on the moon because they're considered to be ignorant and um, they're considered to be rude and um, you know I haven't seen anything that could tell me otherwise this is like uh, another shot of their getting confronted by fallen beings notice this pit right here they were basically filming the, the animal life underneath the caravans on the moon there's a lot of species on the moon, a lot, a lot of people don't know that um, they're beings called selenites who have wings. There are reptilian creatures that are under there. They resemble small little, from what I understand, they resemble small dinosaurs or, or small dragons. They're very, very small. And um, this type of species, they have one for the moon and there's another species like it on Mars that also, they tunnel under the ground. At the time when they were doing this, this was a later Apollo mission, as you can tell with the rover they had. And um, this means it was after Apollo 11. And then um, when this mission was going down, basically they got confronted by the fallen angels. You'll see them up here. Um, there's actually five of them coming around. But um, every one fallen angel is probably like 20 or 30 of them. Remember, they join themselves. They basically fuse themselves together and um, travel in a light source. And so... Um, I always remember that, like when Jesus said to um, to the demoniac in the garden, um, in the garden of the Gardarians, the tomb areas, um, he basically asked him his name. The demon gave one name, he said, I'm legion, one name, but yet we are many. But this is the kind of show you, like when Beyonce says, I'm Sasha Fierce, there's a whole lot more people to Sasha Fierce. And so... That's kind of what you have with aliens, too. They travel in the same way. Same thing here. You have two of these beings coming around, coming up to surface. And um, basically there, too. Um, basically, I have a similar thing. Got a light source showing an odd spectral being in the air. And more spectral beings here. Um, very similar to what I'm talking about. You see how they travel close together. You got one here, and then you got one here. The Bible says that they're beings of light, meaning spiritual beings. And these are also pictures of basically them covering up moon structures. This is NASA telling you there's nothing up there by erasing what's actually up there so that you can go home and think there's nothing up there, even though you'll never go home and think, well, if there's nothing up there, why are they doing this? You know, what's the point of this? Why would you do that? Yeah, that's basically to show you that they're hiding what's up there. They don't want people to know about what's going on there, what's, what the deal is, and stuff like that. 
So that's why you have a lot of these buildings that are just being basically covered up. Um, same thing here. What you have here with this structure is that it's a ruin, a very massive ruin. And um, it's basically a temple. And um, from what I understand, it's very, very huge. The structure is probably a good five, six miles uh, wide. We're probably going up to about maybe 15 miles high. It's very, very huge. And um, it's one of those structures that uh, hardly ever gets talked about. But um, very, very powerful indeed. And um, we have more, more of the same type of thing here when they were basically landed in this area here. This is when they were filming the um, abandoned city or the ruinous city. It was a city made of metal and crystal. I kid you not. Many of the buildings were had huge giant holes in them or they were halfway destroyed or hanging. They were mostly ruins. They filmed and actually shot photographs of this massively wide buildings, massive area, and had to cover up it the whole entire thing with pitch black. But because there was so much uh, crystalline in the photograph, a lot of people were able to just use a lot of infrared and a lot of other um, camera ways to bring out the images that were being covered up in there. So you, with the greenness and the blueness and other things, you're starting to see that there was something huge, something quite massive that was there, that the astronauts were to go there and basically extract technology from there and, and basically film it. What's so heartbreaking about that is that you won't see that in the National Museum. Um, this is back to what I'm talking about here. You'll notice it here. There's a big opening right here, and when the other astronauts on this mission, when some who actually leaked some information, came from the radio transmissions, the radio transmissions revealed that they walked through an opening. And when they walked through an opening, they were basically walking on a platform opening, and they were underneath the structure. And when they looked, they were able to see the more of the city and what it looked like. They said this opening structure was made of metal and crystal, that there was metal uh, pillars holding it up, while the rest of it was just crystals. And, um, and they basically just walked straight through it. And um, that was the opening where they walked in and basically were looking around at it and then they walked out and started taking pictures of the overview of it. And you'll notice some of these rock things here. There's more to these rocks than people think. There's actually technology that's buried within those rocks. So what they had with this area was that there was a lot of ships ingrained in the dust in the ground of the area. And basically they were taking pictures of the structure that was around them. But uh, what's so shocking about it, if you look how small this astronaut is, and how large you know, the structure was, you you really start to grasp um, the architectural skills of the old world was was mind blowing. And um, you got kind of like same stuff here, but you know it's kind of NASA spreading disinformation. Um, basically, these rocks things right here, there's more to it than people think. Uh, sometimes they're actually pieces of technology broken off. Sometimes they actually have animal life living in it or biological life in it. And so they just basically erase it. And this is kind of like showing you their guilt because if you look at it, you know, if you didn't have this information, you wouldn't think much of it. But they get rid of it anyway because in their hearts and what they're doing, they know what it is. And so they don't want you to figure that out. So the less you know, the better is kind of where they go. At. And so, yeah, same thing here is you got them erasing stuff, erasing towers and other things. You got the same thing here, um, erasing other towers. I want people to see what's what's there. This was actually a fallen angel, and what it was basically doing was being very intimidating. It shapeshifted itself into a giant ribbon, and these are just other questionable areas where it's got moon bases on it. There's other activity there, activity that you know. It's very, very uh, horrible, most of it. You know, if it's secret, it ain't good. These are pyramids that are on the moon, and um, you notice one, two, three of them. From the shot angle, actually four right over here. From the shot angle of it, you'll see, you'll think that these pyramids are close together, but they're actually not. Um, they're probably maybe three to six miles apart from each other. And, um, Basically, in that time, pyramids were built for energy sources.
kind of like a big giant battery to light up your city. And um, that's what they were there for, basically. And this is a show that they're somewhere near a ruinous city, and they're not too far off from it. And um, it's very powerful. And same thing here, um, what we had here were UFOs kind of lying upon the surface. They would look like giant bugs, actually. And um, basically these things started to pop up when these astronauts started to take pictures. This is one of the major reasons that spooked them um, to get off the moon. Um, many of these astronauts, actually, when they went to the moon, a lot of them thought they weren't even coming back. They were that um, scared by it. Uh, basically, we have more of the same thing here. We have a statue of a, from my understanding, a goddess-type ruler with a sword that's been broken off. We see the, the handle of the sword here, and you see its blade in right over over here. Um, very interesting, because it's, it's old world metal, so it would be kind of interesting to look through that a little bit. Um, very, very interesting indeed. We have here was a Viminia ship. Uh, this is known as a smaller Viminia class ship. And this comes from straight from the old world. So this was an old world ship. Uh, meaning it wasn't built by the government. It was built by a government those thousands of years ago. And um, basically, as you can see, the three holes there, it was, it was attacked, basically. And um, but looking at how advanced it is, it's, it's, it's marvelous. From what I understand, they were going in there to take away computer chips that were on it. And uh, to get a schematic, uh, basically, of, of how it was built. Um, just a beautiful ship, though. Um, nothing really quite like it. And uh, so what we have here was the type of engines I was talking about in terms of Dominia. Um, this is one of their engine capsules. And if you look here, this is the crystal that's right in the center of it. And uh, it's basically built to fuse uh, power and H2O basically and um, they fuse it inside this crystal and basically to use it power up an entire ship and so this is why they came to that area because they knew what was there and they were trying to uh, extract the technology and um, what we have here is basically a pagan altar built on the moon um, quite interesting uh, but um, this was from a long time ago and um, basically that's what they did and um, it's just quite shocking this is more stuff here you're looking at more ruins in the ground here and um, looking at a just a kind of oblong structure really it's if you look at this blue thing right here this is actually what they couldn't completely cover up but um, this is to show you that that massive uh, blue crystal city that we just got through talking about this is one of the beams that's being shown um, that they weren't able to cover up completely. And um, it's just very mind blowing. And uh, this is kind of showing you what they really covered up in this photograph. Um, this whole area right here has an abandoned ruinous city on it. And when they showed this photograph, they showed it, but they took out the actual city that they were covering up. So this is kind of showing you what they did, you know, uh, what was really there, and um, why they uh, took it out. Showing you how advanced their camera techniques are, or are in terms of eradicating things, you know. you think they would um, be truthful, but, you know, that's the government for you. Um, they've disappointed us. And so this is another picture of another moon base that they have. And um, what you're looking at here is called portal technology. And um, that's what this big giant thing is used for. And um, what you're looking over here is a tractor that's about to come in. And this tractor usually goes to the mining fields, picking up silver, gold, metal, other resources. And this is one of the bases that they have on the moon. And um, sometimes people come through portals. They're walked out through here and they come into this base here, this tractor's here, you'll notice mining fields here around it. You'll notice this big flash of light right here, which had a lot to do with the fact that when the astronauts came close to it, um, the fallen angels appeared, because fallen angels are everywhere on the moon. And um, 
basically guarding a lot of their evil things that they got human beings involved in. Basically, this was the mothership, as it's well known, the Minia ship. Um, when we come to learn about this area, is that the reason why they fogged out or put a lot of electrostatic in terms of the scenes around this area was because of all the gold that was around that area. There was so much gold in that area that it's it, it's it's just mind-numbing to think about in terms of your imagination. To see the gold that clearly from all the way up in the sky shows you that there wasn't like bars of gold down there. You can consider like almost like a halfway of a mountains of gold down there. There was gold nuggets and rocks and mountain-shaped rocks of gold down there. I kid you not. Like basically um, a gold nugget that's something like 10 miles high and um, just scattered all around the all around where this mothership was abandoned and um, just it's, it's it really blows me away because um, it kind of shows you that um, they were using a lot of gold a lot of resources and then it could also it's also showing you that God placed a lot of those resources on other planets too and so um, what we have there was Basically, it was a hot area, and that's why Apollo 20 was needed, and that's why the other missions that they did led up to Apollo 20, because they wanted to get that gold, that technology, they wanted that area. And so, um, it's very shocking. This is to show you how big that ship was. I mean, it's huge. Um, this is the harbor point of New York City, uh, the Manhattan area. And if you look at some of the largest buildings that are in the world, they, they're nowhere near as big as this ship and um, that's saying quite a bit this thing is absolutely huge it, it was so big that you were able to put about a half a city of people in it and um, just massive just very very big and it's kind of showing you that um, the top part of it or the, the hill part of it was actually made in gold so it's, it's really uh, just very powerful stuff there alright so what we're looking at here is called First of all, from what I understand, it's an old world structure, and it had something to do with basically a meeting ground place, if you will. Um, if you've ever gone to an airport, usually the first thing you go to when you go to the airport is that you go to the airport building. That's what this was. Uh, basically, it was a place where people gathered when they were about to take off. The Germans discovered the ruins of it, and so what the Germans did was is that they basically remodeled it. And when they remodeled it, they used it as a base of headquarters when they were extracting um, resources off the moon and when they were building an underground base on the moon. So years later, after the Germans built the base, they abandoned um, the this post. And uh, when they abandoned this post, uh, basically they went underground and then years later the astronauts came here and when they came to this specific area what the Apollo 11 mission was about was to spy on the base on the moon base of the Illuminati and not just spy on this base they were also supposed to take resources off that area Apollo 11's mission was to do reconnaissance reconnaissance is, is that you're going to film an entire area you're going to spy on it basically and you're going to find out what's there, you're going to find out what you can pull off real quick, what kind of tactics you can do through the surveillance of the area. And that's what they basically did. They were assessing what they can and cannot do. And they were assessing what was there. And so that's what this whole Apollo 11 mission was about. It was about filming the ruins, filming the resources, assessing what you can do. And so that's what basically was going on here. And what we're looking at with this structure is that it's a very huge structure by the way it's about two it's a two-story structure but it's very long it's very wide and um, when you go directly into it into what they're doing here is they're going into the front door basically and when you get a very good look at it you start to see what I'm what I basically mean here you can basically see there was a time where basically what you're looking at is the inside of an airport if you will but a space age airport there was a time where people would be well basically they'd be lined up over here over here and you got these other buildings and other rooms where people basically would have had their office if you will and 
you know, there was more to this uh, structure. A lot of it was destroyed, but there would have been a lot of uh, technology around it. So by the time the Germans got to it, the Germans would have just remodeled it, you know, uh, put some new structures on it to hold the building up and things like that. Once it was abandoned, it was just, that was it. So you'll notice some things about the, the walls of the building. You notice that they're very bright. You notice that when they come in with the camera, it seems like the whole thing seems to illuminate. That has a lot to do with basically the walls. The walls are made out of alabaster. Alabaster makes things glow, kind of like uh, marble does. And so, from what I understand, this structure was a combination of, of alabaster and marble, and kind of like a white, white stone, if you will. And so that's why it has a very type of eerie glow. This is one of the astronauts walking. Uh, we believe this was Buzz, actually, with Armstrong filming. And uh, if you take a good look, you notice some things here. You can see kind of what I'm talking about. You can see how this is an old world structure with some new structures in it. But this is kind of like an old world kind of uh, line, if you will. It's a place where people wind up. And um, the more and more you get a very good look at it, you'll know there's these archways. Archways are places where people would gather. They'd be coming in and going out. And um, you'll notice some other things. You look at these beams across right here, you'll notice that some of these beams are attached to the old structure, which is to hold it up. And you'll notice the ground is very broken up, and that has a lot to do with the destruction that uh, the building went through or was basically hit with, you know, a long time ago. And um, you'll notice now he's filming another room, which is here, and he's about to go right into that room. And so what he's doing is, is that he's just walking along it, and uh, you start to notice some bra some rocks, blocks, and things that have been broken apart. You'll notice here also how it's one room here, rooms here. You'll notice how it looks very much like a big giant office building. And um, that's kind of what you got to re put into you is that that is what you're looking at. Is that you're looking at a building that had an administration administrative function. And even in the old world, it had an administrative function. And when the Germans um, took this land, they made it also into an administrative function. And then until after a while, that was pretty much it. And so um, that's what you're just looking at here. You're, you're looking at a, a building that used to house very advanced technology, and then the Germans used it. And the Americans spied on it and walked in there and wanted to get a very good look had what's inside there. From what I understand, there was circuit, circuit boards that were left around in there. There were metal uh, pieces as well. So basically, they, they, they collected all the circuit boards and all the metal pieces and all, the, all that type of resource so they can carry back with them while filming the rest of the structure is what they did. And um, pretty soon you'll see that when they're digging up these metal um, pieces into piles. And so you're looking at more of the structure, what he's basically doing now, he's getting more closer near the ruins of the structure, and now as you see what he's doing, take a very good look at what he's doing. He's looking at the ground because he's noticing that there's metal pieces on this ground. So that's what he came for, and so he's looking around to see what he can pile up. Just getting a very good look at it, at the whole thing. So now you see him walking over it. and. Um, if you're wondering why they walk so smoothly over it, that has a lot to do with the uniforms they're wearing. Um, they wear things that are about like 200 pounds, and with the shoes, the shoes have a very strong adhesive, so it feels like bouncing. But they're not bouncing because of the atmosphere, they're bouncing because of the shoes that they're wearing. And if you um, look very uh, good at it, it's, you notice how the structure's missing a floor here. You notice how with this building, the entire top floor that should be like a ceiling on top of them is not there because that has been wrecked, destroyed. And so only some part is holding up in the back while the front part has been basically gutted. And so um, this is just more of that. You see these beams here and then you see these archway beams that I keep I want to keep mentioning it to you. You see more arch beams here and more arch beams here. And that's just to tell you, you know, that it was an administrative building. 
and people would have been lined up here, they would have been lined up here, they would have been going into another building here, getting their papers or getting prepared for flight. Then they come out of the building, and then if you notice, right at the very far end of this building, that's about maybe a mile off, or half a mile off, is where the Viminia ship is, the one that Apollo 20 went after. And that's to show you what that area used to be. It basically used to be a massive space-age airport. So you're looking at some of the buildings that were left over from it, and this was one of the administrative buildings that they had. So um, that's more you know, what you're looking at. If you take a very good look at it, you see how this building you know, had levels. Had, it was a two-story building with, with a lot of floors, a lot of inner floors, so basically levels of rooms, bedrooms, office buildings. Basically, that's you know what it was, basically. And so um, I just want to keep reiterating that because you know a lot of people look at this building and they'll think it's alien or they'll think you know the Germans built it and but it's a lot more complicated than that and also pretty simple at the same time. And so um, it's pretty tripped out. This is what I'm talking about. If you look up here, you can see the the floorboards up here, and there's floorboards here, and then. All of a sudden, there's just this big opening right here, and that's because half the floor on top is missing. Um, basically, got it, and um, a lot of things like that, alabaster walls. But you notice how some of these, you know, wallings here are more darker. They don't really shine that well, and so that's to show you that the Germans had to, like I said, remodel. They had to put some of their raw material on there to kind of hold the building up so that they can use it. And um, this is Buzz in the middle of it. And, you know, it's a funny thing with Buzz. They said right at this point, when, when he's standing in the middle of it, just looking at it, what was going through his mind is the fact that he just could not believe that this was there. You know, like, he's just mesmerized by the fact that somebody built this here before he ever got there. And now he's thinking also, man, i got to go back and tell the people that we're the first ones on this moon, and there's nothing here. While well, he's in the midst of the truth, it's, uh, it's a very eerie moment for him. And uh, if you notice how still he is, he's just standing there, just looking. And so um, it's just to kind of give you the insight of you know what's going on with him. You know, he's just really mesmerized by what he's seeing. And it's got a good look shock at it. You can see how how big this building is in terms of width. It's a it's a width building, definitely. But it, it goes for quite a bit. Like um, you know, you got these tunnelways that are going all the way or hallways if you will. They're actually hallways. And going all the way down and all the way down, you see how long this building was. It was probably close to about a mile long. And um, it's very, very huge in terms of that. And so um, one thing about old world buildings is that they emphasize a lot on width and um, width and length. They were very um, astute at that. So that's what you got going on here as well. Um, also, you'll notice there's more hallways here. You know, more doorways, more doorways. Hallway down over here. It's another section over here. Um, it's just mind blowing. Top of right here is actually the, the main. Uh, ceiling right up here and uh, it's kind of a box shaped structure an oblong box shaped structure and um, once again Buzz is just more in awe you notice how slow he's moving now kind of looking around at it just kind of in disbelief just you know really blown away by what he saw if you're looking at it right here um, this is another hallway point and where they're at their uh, module is right over here and so that's what they're basically looking at and uh, you notice how the how this room is designed um, it has a very interesting type design you know um, the design is very interesting I, every time I look at it um, I can tell with old world structures um, they were very into being creative and so um, but not too far off from what we would build the structure as it's kind of like the the same style, uh, same format of, of how we build our buildings. So it's very powerful stuff, and uh, the more you get a look at it, you know, the more you're really floored by it. Okay, so you'll notice that they're on the outside. They're actually filming in the inside something on the outside, 
and this is their module so one thing you gotta ask yourself is what's this thing right up here now that is quite interesting because it's actually outside and so uh, it's a little weird it probably has a lot to do with the entities that are up there and um, they did describe that the entities were hovering on top of their heads so um, that could have something to do with that um, very very weird indeed and uh, that's probably why he's filming the module right now because he's getting worried okay this is what I was talking about in terms of picking up metal fragments and circuits now if you notice of what he's doing if you take a very good look at what he's doing, that's exactly what he's doing. He's collecting up circuits, he's collecting up wires, and he's collecting up metal pieces. And he's basically piling them up so that they can basically take them out of there. And that's what Mr. Buzz right here is doing. Um, he's uh, basically trying to uh, pile them all up together. And um, quite interesting. And the um, reason why it's dark there is because there's just no, not enough light. And uh, this is a, a com computer composite of what the structure looks like. If you uh, take a very good look at it, it's very, very big. And um, you can see how it's just a big, massive, long, two-story administrative building. And uh, just very, very huge. And uh, quite, quite interesting indeed. And uh, that's just to give you a very good look at what you're looking at. And um, there's just so much about this, you know. Uh, this is a piece of the second floor ceiling. It's broken off there. You'll notice some things on top of it. It's kind of circular, like um, blocks and stones on top of right here. We could, that could have more of a function than we think. We could be looking at a piece of a broken off machine. And um, it's just amazing, you know, uh, very sad when you look at it, too, because, you know, you realize certain things and, you know, you realize what we lost due to sin, due to rebellion against God. We cost ourselves quite a bit. And, um, you know, the earth is, is temporary. Even the planets are. None of this stuff is going to last. You're not going to see this stuff in eternity. And uh, believe me, you don't really want to. The place is haunting, by the way. Um, if you have the astronauts who talked about it, who covertly talked about it, spoke about the feeling of being haunted, you know, the feeling of something was on their back or on their shoulders, um, looking at the apparitions of the fallen angels being haunted by them. So um, the moon is very much haunted. So right now we're going to show you a female body that was found on the moon. And this came from Apollo 20, which was a very covert mission. And it was done between Americans and Russian astronauts. And this mission was the last known mission to the moon in terms of the American involvement of it. And this is the body that you're looking at right here. And You'll notice some things about the body is that you'll notice these tubes that are connected to her eyes and her mouth and to the center point of her head. These tubes are actually flying devices and they are devices that are attached to the neurons of her mind basically. They had a technology back then a long time ago where they were able to pilot things almost seemingly using their mind but they were using technology that was attached uh, to their mind to send out a, basically a particle ray to operate computers that would lift the ship into the air. And so basically that's what you're looking at are, are piloting devices that are attached to her face. And if you get a really good look at her, you'll notice her skin is very much in place. The people in the ancient world lived for a long, long time. That means that their skin texture was far more powerful than ours, meaning they didn't decay as quick as us. As they lived for thousands of years, it would also take thousands of years for them to decay. And so that's why her skin is still intact. Also, the fact that where she was, it was highly cold. She actually was frozen to death. So when you add that in, in there, it, pretty much you can see why her skin is very much attached. 
and there's other things you'll notice about her. Um, if you notice the rims around her hair are quite curly and you'll notice some of that there and there and you'll notice some in the back shot. Um, basically those are braids and she had braided hair and um, if you take a pretty good look at her you'll notice that her, her facial features resemble someone of of quite great beauty. She was known as a very beautiful woman in her time. She is also the pilot of this ship and her body was the only one that was intact at the time when they found the other bodies. They found other bodies next to her but they were in pieces. She was the only one that was intact. We got a very good look now at this implement right here. We can see a piece of this technology which is attached to the center of her head and you can see how the tubes are all attached to the eyes and then attached all the way to the bottom. So what you're kind of wondering is is that what she's doing is, let's say when she's piloting the ship, she's giving commands with her mouth. And those commands with her mouth are then being fed into the tubes, into her brain. And what it is is that there is a machine that is attached or can send a signal from that machine all the way into this device in her head which would then send the commands to the ship, sort of like being on a cell phone and talking on that cell phone and powering the whole entire ship through it. Um, very advanced communicative technology. Uh, so advanced it makes a person look like they're psychic almost, but there's just technology. And that's a very good look at the device here and here. And um, this is just mind-blowing technology, just very mind-blowing. You got to really wrap your head around it. You know, here are more of the braids that are pretty much frozen. Her whole entire hair was frozen in, and um, you just really got to wrap your really got to wrap your head around it. Uh, the people in the old world in the time of Noah lived in an advanced state of technology, and so the way they looked, the way things looked, are not what you would ever saw them as. There has been a lot of science fiction films, but the truth is so much of them are disinformation that they never really showed you the raw, real appearance, they knowing of what the old world used to look like. And uh, if you notice how her mouth is in an expression of fear or kind of an expression of panic, it's, it's because she was frozen to death. So um, apparently she was basically in a, in a state of terror at the time she died. Uh, this is one of the astronauts trying to re find a way to remove the tubes off of her face without damaging her face. Uh, he's trying to find a way in there. I want you to take a very good look at this note because it's very, very important. This is actually a piece of paper of the ancient language of the old world. This was the language that we used to speak a long time ago. This was the language that we had before the Tower of Babel, that incident that busted up all the languages of the earth. This note is written in cursive writing, and um, what you have up top of here, and this is from an analysis of the note. Um, we have not been able to translate the note or figure out the components of the lettering. We have been able to figure out its vocal intention, however, and we have been able to figure out that it's a note styled after the type of notes that we see today. Basically what you have up here is a name and a date. And what we have here is a very long explanation of something that we don't know. But uh, vocal contention is, is that they spoke many, many words in a row. Like a, a sentence that we would break down is probably one long continuous sentence for them in the way they spoke. And that's about as far as I can get with that. And this is about as far as any investigation has been in, into that. Um, it's a combination of basically cursive writing that's similar to English cursive writing. And the letters are, are almost similar to English. So what we have here, you know, is a more close-up look at what, what we're speaking on here. Um, you notice that it's very cursive, but you notice how the sentences just continue to go on. And you notice it's more cursive here, design, but the sentences don't have a, a cutoff, you know, they don't have a punctuation mark or a dot. They just continue to go on, and they continue to go on. Then you have a more type of high 
signia right here and then it continues to go on this is to show the kind of language they spoke how those they spoke continuous sentences you know as we would stop or pause they would continue to go and um, their whole entire language was almost like a song you know um, this is done in songs songs do this when a person sings a song it's it's a continuous course it's just, it's just going on and you understand what the song is their language was similar to that and um, it's just very fascinating. Um, I wish I was able to tell you more. I wish I was able to translate the, the whole thing, but we no longer speak this language, and so that's why we're not able to. The paper is green, by the way, um, which is quite interesting. Um, they fractured color, different color paper back then. And this is black ink, by the way. And an interesting tradition says that it was Enoch who came up with black ink. So that's kind of interesting. Um, you know, there would be tell you, people tell you they didn't have black ink back then. <laughs> tell that to this piece of paper. And so um, this is, it's quite interesting. This is another note that, that was found on it. And um, the interesting thing that we found out with this note was that there was three people who signed off on it. Um, here, here, and here. Um, all we know is is that from analysis is that the, these could be names and a date and another message here and um, the funny thing is is that these notes were like found all throughout their bodies or where their bodies were at um, it's a sneaky suspicion that they were writing their last will and testament and that's what these notes could have possibly been because they're very eerily found where the bodies are and they seem to have just been scattered like something real bad was coming down on them, which was the effects of the flood. And one of the things uh, people will observe in terms of what people do when they're about to die is usually they write things and they say goodbyes and stuff like that. You know, for all this note writing, I guess they never thought to pray, you know. They lost faith at that point. This is uh, more of what I'm talking about. This is another note. So far, you've seen uh, three different notes so far. And this is another piece of note um, with the same deal. Um, just some long, sporadic writing that we're seeing there. And what the astronauts did was they put all these notes in these Ziploc bags that you're looking at here. These white bags that you're seeing right here is the bags that they use to put the bodies in. And um, basically, they're just sorting out the notes and filming it for NASA's viewing pleasure, basically. And um, But when you're looking at this, um, a lot of people look at that and go, what exactly is that? These are computer circuits, by the way. And these are actually very advanced computer circuits. These are circuits that have been attached to a blanket. I kid you not. And apparently this blanket was draped on the pilot, actually. Um, this uh, part right here is, is some of her um, lower body. And um, the um, covering was here, where her stomach is. And this right here was part of her leg. And um, for some reason, this covering was on half of her body. And um, it's believed that it may have something to do with, there's two theories on it. One is, is that the covering is some type of computer circuit board that's used for the ship. Another one is, is that it's an example of transhumanism technology, that this daughter of man, this, this specific female, had cybernetic implants in her. And one of that was this type of covering that was on her leg. Um, which, which is telling us that the technology back then that they achieved in terms of cyborg technology was very real. And this is a piece of it that's on her. And much of the transhumanism doctrine that's coming out with the connection to what happened in Noah's time very much supports transhumanism rather than it being a device that's part of a piloting function. And it's mind-blowing technology, by the way. Um, it's hard to know exactly what it did for her when it was attached to her. This is a more close-up shot of it as you're looking at it. It's, it's hard to know what it exactly did for her. Um, there's a lot of th theories. You know, it could have increased uh, strength or speed. 
Um, it could have um, done a lot of different functions like that. And those are usually the main functions is to increase the strength of a human being by using cybernetic parts. And that's what all of this stuff is, basically. This is a more close-up shot of it. And it, it's, it's just, it's mind-blowing. It's unlike any circuits that you've ever seen or known. These are circuits that are far more advanced than what you would ever have known. Um, then they work far, far better than anything you can, can think of in terms of what we're dealing with now or what the government will have you think. Um, that we're dealing with now. This is a more close-up shot of it to get you to really wrap your head around the circuit board of it. Um, when you're looking on the surface of it, it almost feel like a smooth type of painting, almost, or, or a smooth type of uh, paper, cardboard paper. But when you look further into it, you see that there's actual computer circuits inside of it. And these are the up-close up shots of these circuits, and they're just basically coursing. Um, throughout her um, particular implement and they're attached to her skin by the way and that's why the transhumanism technology is makes far more sense because um, it's it's very much attached to her actual person and what you're seeing here is more parts of her body um, this is a more up close shot of her leg and uh, up close shot of her, her body frame to kind of give you a, an example of what happened to her skin or close up more a telescopic close-up look of her skin and um, basically you can see how it's you know it seems like instead of decaying it's chipping and so that's uh, that's fascinating the skin is very hard and it, it looks like it's the type of skin that really would take a lot to even cut it and so it's very strong skin it's not you can see how far humans have degenerated we literally decay um, we don't chip away um, but back then, they chipped away before they actually decayed. And uh, fascinating. And uh, what you're seeing here is her co-pilot. And the co-pilot's head was severed. And so um, what you're looking at here is the severed head that they found. And um, it was right next to her. This co-pilot didn't have the um, implements attached to her. And where she was found, actually, she was uh, found a few, from what I understand, about 15 to 16 inches away from the pilot. And her head was found about 16 inches away, um, with her other body parts being found in pieces. Um, one thing you got to understand, the astronauts' impression of it, when they came onto the site of it, the Apollo 20 crew, was that they felt that a violent incident took place. Um, at this time because the body parts were in pieces which hence that they were hacking at each other toward the end of it. The pilot seems to have been preserved for two reasons. She may have been the captain and having privileged knowledge she may have tried to get away while this was happening and um, but basically wasn't able to escape. The meteorites that blew open onto the moon caused a freezing on the moon that basically if anybody who didn't get taken out by the blast was going to get taken out by the freezing effect she seemed to have survived the blasting effect but got caught in the freezing effect which happened pretty much simultaneously right after the blast and um, that's as far as it's known and, and what will eerily shock you is that a lot of old world technology that's found all have traces of, of a violent disturbance that had taken place on it from having laser holes blasted into them from bodies being found in pieces and being found in suspicious ways showing that they were in a state of panic and violence at the time that the uh, the flood effects were taking place and um, so much of that is you gotta really wrap your head around that that uh, these people were living in a very violent, violent society. This is an after shot of when they removed all the tubes off her face. Um, right now, they basically got her on Apollo 20. And so this shot right here was basically to show you the after shot of when they had it all removed. Um, they had a, a female doctor who was with them as an astronaut. And she was the one who removed the, the tubings off her face. And um, key things to note is, is that when they removed the tubes off her face, they said that this 
ooze, this type of eerie ooze was oozing out of her eyes and out of her nose. Um, they believe that those that, that might have been part of the cartilage of her brain and the flesh of her eye. That um, you know, at the time when when she died of the freezing effect, it affected the circuits, and that would have fried the inside of her um, organs in her brain and her um, optical eyeball. And so that was the oozing stuff that came out. And that's why they don't open up her eye, because there's nothing in there, basically. And But we get a very good look at what she looked like. And uh, we can see she was a very beautiful woman um, when she was alive. Um, she has very voluptuous lips and all that stuff. She's, she's, she's gorgeous. Um, a friend of mine kidded me and said that it looked like Angeline Jolene. <laughs> Uh, but I disagree with that. She looks better than Angeline Jolene. <laughs> um, what we're we'll looking at here is the natural mark that's upon her head. Um, it's said that the, the daughters of, of Cain or Canaanites or people who descended from them had uh, deformities or specific marks that registered them as being Canaanites. And so this is what we're looking at up here. Uh, you'll notice that it's a cross formation, actually. You can see here and here, and so there would have been one here and down here. And there's a serpent form right here. And um, it is believed that this is the old world mark of the beast. And at that time, um, from what we understand, she was born with this mark. This is a mark that's actually born upon her. But there were some who were actually taking a mark or a tattoo mark that had two type of components. It was a digital chip that was tattooed into your skin. Um, but much is believed that this is uh, her natural, um, f you know, something she was born with, basically. And, um, and it's quite sad. What we're looking at here, if you want to know who she is, she is a daughter of man. House was registered in Genesis, meaning she is a descendant of Cain, and she was a witch and a old world uh, pagan who was a advanced pilot, and she flew a mothership, and she is a member of the Rama Empire because the ship that she was found in registered to have been part of that old world empire, in terms of the technology that was found, and. Um, she was found intact, as you can see. Uh, you'll notice some damage here on her face, on her cheek here. And um, this is all chipping, by the way. Her face is starting to chip here. And um, you'll notice some of the kind of the chipping on her lips and things like that. And um, and you'll notice just how well her face looks. You can tell that when she was alive, she was a radiant-looking woman. But she was also quite an evil woman, from what I understand about the daughters of men. They weren't, they weren't the type of women you took home to mom, if you know what I mean. And um, this is uh, pretty much a function. What he's doing here, in terms of this flashlight, you'll notice that he's got this flashlight all over her. He's basically checking her skin out. He's basically checking uh, for any abnormalities. Um, you know, anything that's out of the ordinary, anything that doesn't fit. He's trying to make sure everything is intact, everything is looking okay. You notice that he's putting this tube up her nose because before there was stuff draining out of her nose. So he's making sure the nose has been cleared out and um, he's making sure everything's cleared. You see the stuff that he's taking? So the type of stuff that was drooling out of her um, nose. This is actually tissues of her brain being pulled out of her nose. So it's, uh, her death was pretty, uh, pretty painful. And um, what we're looking at here is a very good, good, good picture of her because now we get like a good front shot of uh, basically what she would have looked like if she was alive. You know, um, you know, he's pulling more brain tissue out of her nose, and um, it's quite shocking. You know, Noah spoke about these. Uh, Pacific women. He said that these were the women that corrupted the sons of God, the human sons of God. They used to be married to fall. Some of them used to be married to fallen angels. I don't know if she specifically was, uh, but I do know that she was one of those daughters of men who did corrupt sons of God. That I do know about her. And um, and it's it's sad. You know, it's, it's, it's a horrible reality to really 
wrap your mind around how much history has been stolen from you. Like you would never ever know this, you know, and and that's totally sad. So now we're going to show you um, the image of the ship uh, that was found. And the first thing we want to talk about in terms of this image is that it's a very controversial image. And the first thing I understand is that this image is being brought to us by a very advanced telescope. And it was a telescope that was attached to the technology or the equipment of Apollo 20. Um, it was an instrument that they had that was extremely advanced. And so basically we're looking at an image um, that's actually being looked at from basically thousands of miles into space. And basically they had a technology, much like a telescope, you know, when you look at a telescope, the objects look smaller in the telescope. And so this is what we're seeing here. And they're actually seeing it through a computer screen um, as they're moving the telescope. And so with that understanding, um, that's the understanding you need to have as you're looking at this footage. And also you're going to notice there's a lot of static in this footage. That was actually done by NASA. And I'm going to tell you why you'll see that static and if you take a very good look at it at what they're looking at here you'll notice how the ground is shiny in fact it's very very shiny in fact it's shining yellow and that's because there's a lot of gold and when it starts to static up a lot that's actually what they're trying to hide they're trying to hide the fact of what they were really looking at and what they were really going after they were going after gold technology resources it's the same old man with the same old hang-ups, no matter who's ruling it. And so if you look onto this side right here, you'll start to notice some gold here, and you'll start to start seeing kind of strips of it all on the ground. But it starts to get more stronger around here, and then you start to see it. And what you got to notice about this round gold plate up here is the fact that if you were on the surface looking at it, it basically would look like a mountain of gold down on the surface where you would be at. That's that's a lot of gold, people. <laughs> that's This area is Fort Knox right here. This one area right there. Probably more so. And then look right here. There's another massive mountain of gold right here, too. And that's just mind-blowing. I mean, there's gold on the moon and a whole lot of it. And there's an area there that just has a big, massive, massive mountain of gold. And that's what this whole area is. And that's why they're going over this very, very smoothly. And um, they're trying to get, first of all, they're trying to get a logistics for where to land, uh, where, to, where to go, where to walk around, and basically what to pick up. And so, well, now they're basically scanning the area. And so that you can get a very good view of basically the, the surrounding and the terrain that they're in. And um, soon they're going to start to come across the mothership. And this mothership that you're about to see is the ship that the daughter of man, the female corpse, was found in. And um, she was a pilot of this specific ship. And the ship seems to have been in the hangar, or its hangar. The area, or this area that the ship was found around is believed to have been some type of airport, basically a space age airport, uh, that was basically decimated and destroyed. And so, if you're looking now, you see a lot of these meteor rocks, as you will, and they're all all over the ground now. You see them here, and basically you see them everywhere. And um, these are not, um, you know, natural rock formations. This is the sign of a great devastation that took place in this area. Um, these were the rocks that were shot out of the earth like meteors and they scattered all over the moon to destroy it. And so that's what you're seeing is these massive holes on the ground. And now you're seeing it all through here. You see these things starting to light up right here? Here and here. This is more gold that's being found there. And it's all over the place. Now the static comes and this is NASA. NASA's trying to now hide what they're trying to see. Now it's more gold. And not just gold that you're seeing here and here, but now you're starting to see the ship itself, which is right there in the hangar. And the more and more they get closer to it, they can start to see it. And you'll notice that the ship's main, uh, what you would call the bridge, if you will, uh, the screen that covers it is made of gold as well. 
and that is a big massive gold plate too and um, you'll notice that now they're getting more closer into the ship and now they're looking at it and keep in mind also like I said telescope technology is what they're using you're looking at a computer screen from their ship using a telescope machine so they're actually telescoping this image from their ship onto their ship so they can get a look at it so knowing that to know that's important is because this thing is a lot bigger than you think it's actually far bigger than manhattan itself that's how big this ship really is so knowing that the ground and everything else is far far bigger and so if you notice how these golden massive nuggets mountain nuggets are shining off the ground this is to show you how much is down there and how big this ship is and if you notice where the ship is you notice this big circular thing that's around it. That was part of the hangar that it was once in. But you also notice it's been destroyed too. And so right now he's basically looking at the nose of the ship and he's trying to negotiate a way in. And so right now they're getting an outer look into it before they'll go into a more deeper telescope um, to get a more um, uh, detailed look into it. So basically that's what they're trying to do. And then you notice these big holes that are right on top of it. Um, basically those holes came from the meteor impacts. And now, if you notice all this kind of crazy stuff that's like kind of going on with it, um, right when they get here, you notice how it's very shiny right here. It's basically glowing right there, glowing yellow. And then, you notice how all that glowing stuff was going on and now it's starting to get ooh, more and more shakier now the image is starting to fade out more this is uh, also a NASA trick too and what they were doing was is they were trying to cover up all the gold that was on that Pacific type of um, mountain area that was right above the hangar uh, where the ship was. The ship was inside the hangar and at the top portion of the ship all along that land there were just massive mountains, uh, massive mountain nuggets of gold and that's when it starts to get more and more static because they didn't want you to see that and um, it's quite shocking. There's also um, you know a lot of bright spots in this video that were very suspicious of, of, of entity activity that was going on and from what we understand about that is that every Apollo mission was spied on by the fallen angels so they haunted them and um, many times harassed them um, when they were doing their missions and so you're noticing more of it you see more of these kind of gold contentions here and you see right there right at these areas right here they're just kind of scattered all through there and it starts to get more and more foggier but you start to catch it when you start to take a good look at it and then right up here too it's more and more glowing a lot a lot of yellow golden glow all of that are basically massive gold pieces and with the light, the, the basically all that lighting, that red-blue lighting that keeps happening every time they focus the camera over there, that was NASA's effect on that, basically trying to cover up um, what the camera was catching. And so that's why it's basically glowing all those reflections. We want to thank you for watching our video, and we want to leave you with um, basically this important information about the footage that you just saw. This footage is very, very important because this is the footage that is going on in the world. This is the world that you don't see. These are the things that go on in this world that you've either been lied to about or the right information wasn't brought to you and a lot of those things. We did these videos for two things. One, to show you that they're real and also to explain it to you so that you can walk away with the proper information about what you're seeing. These entities are real. They are hyperdimensional beings who take many different shapes and forms. Our government has lied to us about them since, since they showed up. And um, every world power has dealt with them at one point or another. And every world power has also lied to their citizens regarding them at one point or another. And 
the world that we live in is not quite what you think it is. And when it comes to our history and our past and the threat that we're dealing with uh, right now, that was the threat of the past. Um, basically, if you don't know your enemy and if you don't know history, you're doomed to repeat it. And it's best that you wrap your mind around the truth of what you're seeing and understand that it's real. And we're affected by it each and every day. And we're always close to it each and every day. Um, it's a time to basically reflect on what you saw and reflect on your faith in Jesus Christ because he is king of that world that they come from and he has everything in place. It's a time to really take what you saw and realize that the Bible supports this. This is the reality the Bible's been talking about and this is what you've been denied in church. Church should be teaching you this stuff but instead we have to. We hope more people will teach others. God bless you and good night.